In this tutorial we use QGIS and LAS tools to convert a LiDAR point cloud into a digital elevation model, or DEM. A DEM is a visual representation of the ground elevation within a certain area. This is different from a digital surface model, or DSM, which includes all features within that area, buildings, trees, and so forth. So we'll begin by installing LAS tools and activating the QGIS LAS tools plugin. Then we'll download some LiDAR data, inspect it, and divide it. The final steps involve converting the split files into several DEM files before merging them into a single image or raster file representing the ground elevation of our study area. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's get started. Our first step is to download LAS tools and then activate this in QGIS. So the link for this page is in the description below. Click the download link here. This will open up a zip file. So once that's completely downloaded, we can then go ahead and take the LAS tools folder and copy it to your local hard drive. I tend to just drag and drop it onto my C drive. You can see it's already installed here. Our next step is going to be activating this plugin in QGIS. So go ahead and open your manage and install plugins window. And of course, what we're going to search for here is LAS tools. Click on this and install the plugin. Once this is complete, we can click close. So once we've installed the LAS tools plugin, we have to make sure that it's pointing to the correct directory. And we do this by accessing the options uh, on the processing toolbox. We want to expand the provider section and we can see LAS tools here. We want to activate it and we want to make sure it's in the correct folder. Since I installed it to my C drive, this is correct. You could, of course, edit this and then select a different folder if that's the case on your machine. Click OK and that's it. You've now installed LAS Tools plugin in QGIS. Our next step is to download some LiDAR data. I'm going to do that at the National Map download site from the USGS, but of course, if you can't find data, related to your area, you can search for LiDAR data download geographic region. So let's go ahead and navigate to an area. I'm just going to go ahead and navigate in here to an area I'm familiar with, Fayetteville, Arkansas at the University of Arkansas. And we're going to drag a selection point here, actually a box. And then we need to select the type of data we want to use. In this case, we're looking for LiDAR. So we'll click this box. We'll make sure LiDAR point cloud is selected. We can click the show availability to make sure that it is here, and it is. You can hide that and then click find products. Because I've got a relatively small area selected here, this is only going to be one LiDAR tile. So that's useful, there's just one thing to download. We can go ahead and preview this and then download either the LAS or LAZ. LAZ is the compressed form of an LAS or LiDAR point cloud file format. Go ahead and download LAZ file or LAS. It doesn't really matter. If it's the LAZ, it's just going to be directly to the file. So I'll save this. I've already done it. So click. We can actually overwrite that. So now we have that ready to go. Okay, now that we've downloaded our LiDAR point cloud, we can go ahead and inspect it. And we want to do this because we're going to get some information from this that helps us with our next few processing steps. And the tool we're going to use to examine our LiDAR point cloud is called LAS Info. And so open this tool and navigate to the LAS or LAZ file you just downloaded. Click Run. We don't have to worry about these other settings. And once that's finished, we'll see that this window gets populated with a whole lot of additional data. And so there's a couple of things we want to pay attention to. We can look at a whole lot of different stuff here. We can see uh, classification point codes. We can see number of points. Uh, we can also even see the coordinate reference system used. So if we scroll up a bit, we can see here the coordinate system used. So this is NAD83. It's a UTM zone 15 north. We can also scroll down. And since this is a point cloud, right, the original data is a mass of points representing LIDAR return. So this is an area, or these are points, where the laser has hit something and bounced back. So that could be leaves. It could be the top of buildings. It could be the ground, and so forth. And good LiDAR data will have been classified. And we can see here we have this many points that have been classified as ground. So as we continue to create our digital elevation model, or DEM, these are the points that we're going to be using. So go ahead and close this out, and we can move on to dividing this LiDAR data. 
The unpaid version of LAS Tools has a size limit for the files that it'll process. So in other words, if you use a file that's larger, it's going to introduce error. Now there's a way to get around this. We can split our downloaded LiDAR files, our LAS or LAZ files, into smaller files. LAS Tools actually comes with a really convenient tool for this called LAS Split. So go ahead and open up that tool and navigate to your downloaded file. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the LAZ file, click open. The number of digits we're going to reduce to two. This is just the number of digits it appends to the end of the file name. We do want to split by flight line, that's fine. Interval or number, we'll leave it at the default. And then we do need an additional command line parameter, and this is dash or hyphen split and put in one million. What this does is this gives an upper limit to the size of these split files so that we can work within the unpaid version's restrictions. Click Run, and when this is finished, it'll have created a whole new set of files in that folder where the original file sits. So if we open up that folder, we can see these new files. And here we have them. It's actually converted them to LAS, and that's partly because this output LAS LAZ file often doesn't work. I'll use it, I'll try to input something and I get an error message. I leave it blank and what that means is it just dumps them into the same folder. And so what I do is I create a split folder. I just drag and select all of these newly created files and drag them into that split folder. So what we're going to be doing now is batch processing all of these files in our next steps. So our next step is to take those individual LAS files and create our digital elevation model or DEM files. And so we have a couple of different tools we can use for this. In fact, if you search for LAS2 DEM, you're going to see a couple pop up. You can also see that there's other things you could convert this to. We're going to go ahead and stick with DEM. If you went with LAS2 DEM, that would work on one file. The LAS2 DEM Pro works on multiple files. So that's the tool we're going to use. This is where putting all of those files into their own directory comes in really useful. So we want to specify the input directory. So go ahead and navigate to that directory, select that folder. We know that the previous tool created LAS files, so we want to update that. We definitely need to change the filter to keep class 2. Scroll down. We do want to click Run New 64-bit Executable, and we want to go ahead and specify an output directory. And I'm just going to specify the same directory. Go ahead and click Run, and this will work through each of those 10 files, creating now basically different image files, which we can see if we go into that folder on the hard drive. We'll actually see these TIFF files being generated. So we've now converted all of our individual LAS files to corresponding DEM or image or raster or TIFF files. Now that we've created our individual DEM or raster files, we have to merge them into one. The easiest way to do this is use the preloaded merge tool that comes with QGIS. We're going to choose the one under raster miscellaneous, open this, and navigate to the folder and select all of these files. And remember, what we're looking for are the TIFF files. Select all of those, click OK. Everything else here is fine. We want to go ahead and save this to a permanent file. I'm going to go ahead and save it to merged lidar.tiff. And then we can go ahead and click Run. Now we're going to see some errors here. That's because there hasn't been a coordinate system assigned to this, that's fine. This may or may not show up for you depending on the data you've downloaded, but we can fix that very quickly. As you recall, we already looked at the coordinate reference system when we ran the LAS info tool, and we know that in this case it's NAD83 UTM zone 15 north. So if we select that, we now know that this is referenced correctly, even though this doesn't really look like LiDAR data or elevation data. But if we change this to Hillshade, it immediately snaps into focus and looks very clear to us. Now one of the things that jumps out here is obviously some of these points that were being used to create this digital elevation model, right? So the ground surface, some of these points have been classified as ground points even though they're not. Obviously here in the center is a football stadium. There are methods for 
taking out these points and I'll cover those in other videos. There's our workflow for using free tools to convert a LiDAR point cloud into a digital elevation model. So as always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.